This is Leandra Foreman. She is the farm manager here at Food Chain in Lexington, Kentucky. Um, Food Chain is a nonprofit organization that supports uh, urban agriculture and urban aquaponics. And she's going to be talking to us a little bit about how they uh, manage their farm, including their fish and their plants. So, um, Leandra, can you tell us a little bit about Food Chain and their goals? So, Food Chain is here to demonstrate sustainable agriculture in an urban environment and show how you can utilize old spaces. So, where we're at is an old bread factory. It was the Rainbow Bread Factory. And then we were able to move into the space that used to be the oven room and start producing food here using the aquaponics system. So, our goal is to help both producers see how you can have sustainable agriculture in a city, as well as reconnect people with their food system by providing a really interesting example of food production to people who aren't used to having access to fresh produce. So Leandra, can you tell us a little bit about the plants you have in your system? What do you guys grow here and what's your harvest schedule? So for the most part, we grow lettuces and greens. So we are producing around 30 pounds of lettuce and kale, collards, and Swiss chard. And those, the lettuces are set up on a three-week rotation. So every week we harvest about 20 pounds of just lettuce, and then we transplant all new plants into the system. And then three weeks later, those plants will get harvested. And then those go into a mix that where we are selectively harvesting the baby greens from the kale, the collards, and the Swiss chard. And so those all get mixed together with some shoots that we also produce here. Um, so that's the majority of our production. And then we also do microgreens and shoots uh, for the fancier restaurants. So some of the issues with urban agriculture in general, especially when you're putting them in these spaces, is the kind of humidity in here. So how do you know, there's a lot of interest in uh, reclaiming these urban spaces. So what are some challenges that you guys have found in being in this kind of a, a building that wasn't meant for aquaculture and the, the amount of water that's in here? Drainage. <laughs> yeah. Drainage is definitely the biggest problem. I mean, it would have been uh, basically drainage and ventilation are your biggest uh, issues with this space. So it would be amazing if we had a bunch of floor drains here, um, but we don't, and they would be really expensive to install them. So retrofitting spaces for the ability to have 7,000 gallons of water in it. Uh, that can be definitely a challenge. And installing the ventilation in a building that was built in like the 1800s is definitely a big challenge. Yeah. So you get, as you can see, they have lights set up. These lights are operating on a light mover. So the lights, um, are, how, how far apart are they space? Uh, they're about eight feet eight feet apart. So the lights move up and down on a track. So the the benefit of that is that the plants don't have to, or you don't have to purchase as many lights as you would if you were trying to cover the whole bed on a static um, system. And you don't have to run as much electricity to your lights because you have a third, you have a third less lights basically than you would have without a light meter. Right. And so these are induction lights. So can you talk about why you, you chose to go with like induction lighting? Uh, so we just wanted the most efficiency for our money, and uh, induction lights have an awesome advantage of the light bulbs themselves last about 10 years. Um, so that's a huge advantage to not have to replace them, but they are replaceable. So LEDs, while they last a long time, if one light in your LED goes out, you have to replace the entire panel, and so that can get really expensive, whereas with these ones, uh, we get to reuse the unit and just every decade replace the light bulb. So that right. gives us an added advantage over the LED. Food Chain uses um, this grow medium. It's called a grow grip. It's basically a sponge that you insert a seedling into the grow grip like this. And this grow grip fits down into your hole. Um, they come as either two inch or three inch grow or in sizing. And the benefit of using these is that you can have your crops certified organic using these, but also that they're reusable. So unlike Rockwell cubes or any other type of grow medium that you can use, these are, um, you don't have to replace these each time you want to grow. As you can see, these plants right here are about two weeks along, and they do great in the, in the grow grips. The roots are pretty nice and white, 
They do have a little, some problems with their solids, but that's to be expected in these large commercial type systems. So you can grow, these plant, these type of grow grips are really efficient for smaller plants like lettuces. When you get to the kales and Swiss chards, it's a little bit more difficult because the, the thick stem of those plants kind of um, outweighs what the grow grip is able to support. In the floating raft system, um, when, after the plants are placed in their holes, you know, you can kind of see under here that the plants are, um, the roots grow directly into the water. So these beds are about eight inches deep. Um, generally when, you know, based on the University of Virgin Islands design, you're looking at 12 inch um, beds, but th these do pretty fine. And the, the reason why you want that is so the root mass doesn't take up too much of your water volume. So you're still getting water flow and uh, enough nutrients to all your plant roots. All right, this is our propagation room at Food Chain. So in here, it's, uh, it's basically an offline aquaponic system. So we use water from the system that has all those nutrients in it. But we have all this is just plants and a pump. And we have seed trays full of perlite in here. And we use this room for some specialty microgreens and then for our lettuce starts. So our lettuce likes for the seedlings, it likes a little bit cooler temperature. So in here, we keep the temperature around 65, which would be too cold for our main system. But in here is perfect for our lettuce and we're able to control uh, our water temperature and our air temperature in here and our humidity a lot better so that we get nice, healthy lettuce seedlings to transplant into the main system. This is perlite and this is what we use as our growth medium here. And uh, this is a volcanic rock that's superheated, it's very porous, it holds both air and water very well. Um, and so we're able to use this in our system to plant the direct seeds, the lettuce seeds on here. And then from there, we give them two weeks in this room and then they grow into beautiful, healthy little lettuce seedlings. So you can see our lettuce seedling right here. And so all we'll do to transplant into the main system is kind of peel off the bottom leaves a little bit, shake all that perlite out of their roots. It comes off really easily. And then we put the grow grip on there. And then we put, are able to put that directly into our main system. And those roots just hang down and it's the easiest thing in the world to transfer. What Food Chain is doing here is they have a whole crop of microgreens. So they use two inch polystyrene boards that you can buy at your you know, Home Depot store, Lowe's. And uh, in each of their four by eight sheets, they have um, 14 different trays. So they can grow you know, the whole same crop of 14 micro herbs or they can, uh, micro greens, or they can grow um, different ones. So Leandra's gonna tell a little, us a little bit about um, what they're doing with the micro greens, how they're marketing them, and then uh, an online resource that they've developed. Uh, so we've been experimenting here at Food Chain with all the different varieties of micro greens that are possible. Uh, right now, we've developed a catalog of about 35 different types of microgreens that we can successfully grow in our system. And we've created Google Docs for both a picture, description, and time from seed to harvest of each microgreen. And then we've also developed a cost analysis sheet so that you can see how much it costs us in seed for each tray and then how much we're able to produce from that tray, how much we're able to charge per ounce for each different type of microgreen, and basically cost out each tray and how much profit we're able to make off those trays. So I know it depends on the specific microgreen that you're growing, but um, what do, how much can a person expect to get out of each tray? Like what is the, the range and weight? Um, the, it really depends on your delicate stuff. Uh, it's usually between two and four ounces um, per tray. And so for a lot of this stuff, um, you're, you're getting a pretty small amount, but you're able to charge a little bit more for those specialty items. And then for our shoots, so we grow pea shoots and sunflower shoots and, thing, and radish shoots. All of those ones are a little bit thicker. And so you're usually able to get between eight ounces and sometimes up to a pound off of one tray of those shoots. Uh, at Food Chain, we are growing tilapia as a source of nutrients for our system. 
So they are the animals in the system that provide all of the nitrogen through the ammonia waste. But the benefit of that is that we also get to harvest the tilapia for human food. Uh, so we harvest here once a week. We harvest around seven fish every Friday. And uh, those fish usually are anywhere from a pound and a half to two pounds. And we just do net harvest, so it's a selective process instead of a full batch. So we're not emptying a whole tank of fish at one time. Uh, so we're just slowly emptying out one tank by harvesting weekly. And then once that tank is completely depleted of all its fish, we'll restock it with tilapia that are born here at food chain. Um, when we do that harvest, we do an ice water bath. So we harvest the fish and they just go into the ice and then they just fall asleep and never wake up. Uh, it's a very peaceful process. And uh, once the, they are, they've been uh, cold killed, we will weigh them and then put them on ice and they go directly to the restaurant that's merely feet from where I'm standing right now. So they don't have to travel far at all. And then at the restaurant, they are able to process them, scale them and get them and clean them and put them out in the case to be served whole to their customers. When we harvest, we're shooting for fish that are over a pound, usually around a pound and a half, sometimes as much as two pounds. Um, but anything larger than two pounds is a little too big for serving the whole fish. Uh, anything under a pound is a little too small for the restaurant. Um, uh, so Food Chain operates their own broodstock and nursery system. So first we'll go over their broodstock tanks. As you can see, you know, to have your own tilapia or broodstock, especially if that's your species of choice, um, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. What they have right here is two 275-gallon IBC totes. Um, these can be, you know, purchased either food-grade used or new. Um, they're really affordable. So what they have here is male and female tilapia in this tank right here. And every, you know, three or four days, they'll go through and check the females for eggs. Um, tilapia brood their eggs in their mouths and the eggs will hatch out of there. But to improve survival, what we'll do is actually take the female out, check her for eggs, and you can dump the female down in a bucket to get the eggs out and then produce and then move them over into a hatching tank. So in addition to the main broodstock tanks that we just discussed, um, th there's also a biological filter in the system, which is pretty important when you have uh, when you're feeding heavily for your broodstock and also for um, to kind of clean the water. So what they've done is just use these dish scrubbies. Um, there's probably they have them in bags. There's probably about, I don't know, 50 in this tank. And that just provides the surface for nitrification for our nitrifying bacteria. Um, so the system here is based on the University of Virgin Islands and it's a typical layout for floating raft systems or deep water culture. So we have six grow out tanks that hold about 500 tilapia total. Um, then we have uh, the solids removal, which I'll show you is their main clarifier. So their clarifier is not the typical type of clarifier. So instead of having a baffle down the center, they have a 55-gallon bucket that's open on both ends. The water comes into the bucket and just slows down so the solids are able to settle before the water is siphoned off at the top. Then the water moves down to these biofilter tanks, which has um, orchard netting in the um, inside to catch some of the finer solids. And that also helps with mineralization which is the process of turning organic solids that the fish produce into inorganic solids that the plants need to grow. So because so many solids are produced in these systems, we, they've added an additional settling tank. This tank is full of water about 10 inches, 8 to 10 inches, and it just has, again, like we saw in the broodstock tanks, um, some scrubbies. And that, these can be purchased at Walmart. They're really cheap, no need for anything fancy, and that just adds uh, increased surface area for nitrification. After the solids have settled in this tank, they move to the plant beds where they're recirculated back into the sump tanks, which are built into the floor of the building. Okay. So um, in this area, they have set up their biodigester. Um, it's a 275-gallon IBC tote, and what occurs in here is the process of mineralization. So the, all the solids that are removed from the clarifier daily are put into this tank, 
and just an air stun runs continuously. This allows the solids to stay in the system a little bit longer and bacteria or microbes break down those solids and release the micro and macronutrients into the water. Uh, this, uh, this kind of adds a little benefit to the system as the, the time it takes to break down the solids um, will increase your plant growth so you don't have to add so many nutrients to the system um, in your water. So this is an example of a basic nursery system. So after the fry are sw of swim up age, they are transferred into one of these tanks and each tank has a different age group in it. So the main point of this is the fry are able to be grown in the same tank before they're transferred into the main system. This has a pretty basic solids filtration on it. Um, you know, the smaller the fish, the more they need to eat. So you're gonna have a little bit more solids um, coming out of these systems than in um, like your larger or adult fish. One of the great things about aquaponic systems is that they are infinitely scalable. Food chain system um, has about a thousand plants in it that they take care of and it has about 500 fish. So it's a pretty big system um, for a small scale grower, but um, the great thing about this is it can either be scaled up or down. And also tanks and plant beds can be added as needed. So when you think about um, starting an aquaponic system, if you're just interested in getting into it, you can start with something that is extremely small and kind of get a feel for how it works. And then you could scale up from there and go into bigger and bigger systems. Food Chain has uh, a unique ability through their work to provide a lot of educational opportunities to their community. Some of the ways they do that is through workshops and tours. The, where they're situated in an urban environment, it really provides a lot of access to people who would not normally be exposed to aquaponics or sustainable farming methods. Uh, food Chain is situated in what is considered a food desert. And food deserts are defined as um, distance to a grocery store and the number of households that have vehicles. Uh, from where we're sitting right now um, in Lexington, Kentucky, the nearest grocery store is three miles away. So if you can think about how difficult that would be for someone who has you know, a single parent or a family that has a lot of kids or even just trying to manage getting your grocery on a bus or in a taxi. I mean, those costs can add up pretty quickly. So, Food Chain actually provides a unique opportunity to invite the community into their farm and teach them about you know, local foods, healthy foods, and then even you know, the importance of adding fish into your diet. If you would like more information on uh, KSU Aquaponics, you can contact me, Janelle Hager, at janelle.hager at kysu.edu. If you'd like to come for a tour of Food Chain or volunteer your time or just come um, eat some great food, you can contact Leandra Foreman, and her information can be found on their website, www.foodchainlex.org.